Welcome back to the Taze Tips. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different from the rest of them. This one's going to be a little bit longer because we're going through an entire voyage. Uh, I'm going to go through the Golden Wayfarer Voyage, or some people might call it the Gold Holder Vault Voyage. Um, and I'm just going to show you how to do it, um, how to complete it, and then maybe, you know, tips and tricks on how to make it a little bit more efficient, get the most out of it that you possibly can. Uh, so first and foremost, you have to be level 25 in Gold Holders to even buy this voyage. So you want to go to your reputation. Uh, and just make sure gold holders are love, above level 25. With this voyage, uh, you get a key at the end that opens a vault. Um, the keys range from stone, which is the, the least lucrative, then silver, then gold. Gold's the most lucrative. Uh, stone is between level 25 and 35 of gold holders. You'll get that stone key. Silver is between 35 and 45. And then anyone above level 45 gold holders will get a gold key. And uh, that'll give you the most lucrative loot. Um, also, just to start off the golden wayfarer uh, wayfinder voyage basically what you're doing is you're getting a compass the compass is leading you to islands where there's pieces of a map and you piece together the map to find an x marks the spot for the key that then opens a vault full of treasure so we'll get started here and we'll throw down one of these uh, voyages so to start off we just throw down one of the vault voyages and the first thing that will pop up you'll see is the golden wayfarer or the golden compass whatever you want to call it and essentially it's just going to start pointing you in a direction you need to go. So we're just going to follow this and uh, go towards it. So the further away you are from the island you need to get to, the more broad the uh, the compass will turn uh, left and right. And the closer you get, the more sporadic and the more uh, the more quick quickly it'll it'll go back and forth to left from left to right. So you want to look for that. As you get closer to the island you need to be at, the compass will move quicker. And it'll actually move, once you're on the island, it'll move in more of a jerky motion. So... You'll see what that looks like as we get closer to the island here, but uh, we are on the way to the first map piece. So as you can see right here, there are there's Lone Cove in the distance. Uh, there's a, a couple smaller islands around us here in the distance, but the compass is actually starting to get a little bit tighter in where it's uh, looking at. So we're we're most likely going to be on this little island right here because it is in a, a very tighter, more jerky motion. Um, as we get towards the island, you'll see it move even quicker here. So this is, in fact, the island because it's moving not only quick, but in a very ununiform motion. It's kind of stopping and hitching and going back. It's not very smooth anymore. So this will be the island we're going to. Okay, so now that we're parking close to the island, we're just going to jump on and find this map piece. So as you get onto the island, you'll actually see the, the compass starts moving very quickly. And the closer you get to the map piece, the quicker it'll move until it finally just spins in a circle. And that means you're right on top of it and just dig. we go and there's our first map piece so you can take a look at our map piece here so we got one piece one pretty big piece off that island uh the smaller islands like the one we were just on you're generally only going to get one piece of the map on them uh bigger islands you could get multiple pieces up to two three possibly sometimes one but generally on the bigger islands you'll get more pieces smaller islands less pieces um usually just one um, but yeah, this is showing, if you, if you know the map, it's showing mermaids, but obviously there's no X on it. So now we need to go to the next island to find another piece, hopefully which has the X on it. So we'll look at our wayfinder and go towards the next island. So something to note as we approach our next island here is you don't need every single piece of the map to be able to dig up the, the treasure, the key. Um, you just need the X. So if you got the X on the first piece, you could just go dig up the, the key for the vault on the first piece. Um, it would make it for a very quick voyage. But as you dig up these map pieces, sometimes you'll get skeletons that will spawn on you. Um, the skeletons that are draped in kind of burlap sacks and tattered clothing they have a disguise on. Um, when they spawn, if you kill them, they can actually give you trinkets, gold holder trinkets, which will give you more loot overall. So the more map pieces you dig up, the more loot you can get overall. But if you get the X on the first piece, then the quicker you can do the voyage. So it just depends if you want to do a quick voyage or you want to get maximum amount of loot. Um, but you don't need every single map piece to actually open the vault and get the key. You just need the X to find the key. That's it. Okay, so we've come to our next island here. Again, you can see because of the jerky motion. So we'll jump on and let's find this map piece. So again, just following the compass. The quicker it moves, the closer we are. And we want to look for that spin. Right there. All right. 
so another map piece because this is a small island again probably only going to be one piece but you can check to see if there's multiple pieces by looking at the compass if the compass is moving in a smooth circular motion like that it means it's not here there's not another piece here if it's still jerky back and forth there'll be another piece here but that's our third piece and you can see the beginning of the x on the very t uh, on the right piece there you can see the top of the white x so we'll go to the next island to find our next map piece so again with this map because i generally know kind of where the x is on mermaids so i could go to the map here i could look at mermaids hideaway and i could i can see comparing this where the x is the x is somewhere in this general area right here on mermaids now i could go dig that up but i'm just gonna get another map piece just to be able to show everybody kind of what the map looks like with the x on it when it's together okay so we're on our next island and we'll find uh, hopefully more than one map piece on this island because it's a bigger one okay so it's spinning in circles we'll dig it up So you can see now this gives us the rest of that x so you can kind of see it, it pieces it together better this x is right in the middle of a break in the map but you can still see where it is in the map so uh if we wanted to we could go find the other two pieces of the map uh again they're not going to show us anything other than just more of the island so we're going to go get this x and dig up the key and uh find out where our vault is okay so as we're approaching mermaid's hideaway here we can see we have our map uh, and we have the X on it, so we just go down to this map, and we can pinpoint exactly where the X is going to be, just to make it a little bit easier. So we know it's going to be right around this big rock right here on the end, because you can't, you can, you can, can't really see the rock because of the cut in the map. But uh, if you look at the map, it's going to be right around that area right there on the edge of that rock. So that's where we were looking. All right, we have arrived on Mermaids, so let's jump off and. Uh, find our key so we knew it was right by this big rock right here there we go and we finally get some of those skellies that may drop trinkets here so you'll see what i mean so as they die you can see here both of them drop trinkets all three of them did and there's a last one over here but uh, if you wanted to, like I said before, you might want to kill all these guys because all of them could drop trinkets and that could give you more loot overall. That guy didn't seem to drop anything. All right, so we have a Crescent Island key and I'll just, I'll show you more when we get back in the boat about the key. Okay, so we, we've got the map, we found our key, we dug up the X, and now we have the Crescent Isle key. So we know the vault's on Crescent Isle because it's the Crescent Isle key. So we know that for a fact. And then if you put it down, there's an inscription you can read on it. It says, the moon shines bright within the island's large cave. So there's going to be multiple different islands with caves, uh, with uh, um, vaults on them. But this is Crescent Isle's one specifically. Uh, so basically, there's a, a cave on Crescent Isle. Most people know where it is. And then you're looking for, um, on any of the clues, there's going to be like a moon shines or the, the snake something. It'll have a, a, a description of something that's going to be painted on the wall right by where the vault is. So we're looking, we're going into the cave and we're looking for a painting of a moon essentially on crescent so we'll head to crescent and uh we'll hit that up okay so we made it to crescent isle we're in the cave we can see the moons on the wall um and basically what i did is i brought the key in inside the chest that we got it in because you can use the chest once you get into the vault to get trinkets out it makes it a lot easier to get three trinkets at a time rather than just take one at a time um but a few things before we uh launch this uh or start this vault is this is the outside door there's also an inside door down the hallway after this door uh that hides all the treasure so once we start this uh vault this door will uh drop right away and then we can go down the down the hallway towards the uh, treasure door the treasure door once it opens you have three minutes to get everything out that you possibly can there's nothing in there that you can do that can speed it up or slow it down it's three minutes no matter what uh depending on the crew size um you'll be able to get more stuff out so if you have one person doing this or four people doing this it's not gonna increase the or increase or decrease the amount of loot it's all the same amount of loot for everybody but obviously the more people you have the better chance you have of getting everything out of there whereas a solo um you're not gonna be able to get everything out because there's just too much treasure for one person to, to get out by themselves with the gold piles and everything on on the ground like you'll see um also once we get in there you'll see that i'm going to First of all, try to go and get the 
uh, the chest of ancient tribute, which is the puzzle chest. You have to figure out a puzzle to get to it. I'm going to do that um, the way it's intended using all three medallions. I'll make a video later showing a more efficient way to do it uh, with less medallions, but I'm going to do it with three medallions this time. And then I'll just show you how to uh, how to get everything out of the vault um, as efficiently as you can, especially only doing it as one person. Um, once the inside door closes, the treasure door, uh, you can't get back in. So you want to put all the stuff you want to keep outside that door, but you don't have to put it outside this door because this door will stay open as long as you don't leave the island. So as long as you don't leave the island, you can just put stuff outside the treasure door and you'll be fine. We'll see what I mean here coming up. So we'll start it here in a second. Okay, so when you want to start one of these vaults, you're going to grab your key and you're going to look. These are going to be in different places, sometimes further away, sometimes closer to the door. But you want to look for this little square stone to put it on. So as soon as you place that down, this door is going to drop and uh, get ready to go. All right, so here's all the treasure. So first of all, I'm looking for medallions. So I want to get that chest of ancient tribute out as fast as I can. So the medallions will be scattered uh, around. You just got to look for um, the shine of them, basically. So they can be on any level. There's a bunch of different levels. And here's one. Uh, I think there's another one right over there. Yep. So they're going to be these small circular ones. Depending on the island, they'll have different shapes on them. So there's two of them right there. And you want to stick them in the front of this platform. All right. And we'll just look for the third one real quick. They can be hidden rather sneakily around the back of pillars and things like that. So you, you just want to keep your eye out and see if you can see the shine from far away. It's the easiest way to spot it. Oh, there we go. Another one tucked right back in here. So once I have all three of these in, it's going to show me three images here, which will correspond to the three pillars in front of me. So we got a chalice, an upside down key, and a lock. So the upside down key and a lock, and then two vertical chains. And then what you want to do here is match all three of those onto here. So we need a chalice, upside down key, two vertical chains, and we click this button. So you match the first three pillars up to the images, and then the fourth one matches everything. You can grab this chest, and then basically what I do is I just start grabbing everything I possibly can, start throwing it out. Now, the most valuable chests are the captain's chests. So I would say if I was... If I were you, I would go over the go after the captain's chest first. So what you can do is try to drop those down as fast as you can. Sometimes you accidentally pick up a gold pile like that. The bigger the gold pile, the longer it takes to pick up. So be careful of that. And just start dropping things down. Again, I want to I wanna get the most lucrative stuff I can. I know as a solo, I'm not going to get everything out of here I possibly can. So I'm going to try to, first and foremost, get every captain's chest out. And then after that, I'll go after the trinkets. Because the trinkets are the next best items after the captain's chest. So I'm setting each one of these just outside this door. Because again, once this door closes, it's shut forever. But uh, the, up, like the, the door further up will stay open. Alright. So I'm getting those out now. I think I've gotten most of the captain's chests. I may have missed one or two, maybe. But I'm going to start dropping trinkets down because they will be my next most valuable things. Three trinkets is going to be worth more than a marauder's chest or a uh, seafarer's chest. And this is where this chest comes in. So I can now put three of these in and bring it out. I don't have to worry about it. There we go. So after you're done here, if you still stay in there after you're done, it'll fill up with water. You can still grab some gold piles while the water's filling up until you drown. But eventually you'll drown and then you'll just spawn back on your boat. Uh, when you do spawn back on your boat, the, this door should still be open. So technically, because you've died and left the island, this door should still be open. Sometimes, you know, there are bugs and it closes, but it is supposed to stay open. Um, just to be safe, I've started not dying in the water. I just want to stay out of the water. Don't want to die. I just get out when the door closes. And uh, now you can just basically bring this stuff up to your boat. So unload this loot, put it on your boat, turn it in. And uh, that's how you do the Golden Wayfair or uh, whatever you want to call it, the Gold, the gold Hoarder Vault Voyage. Uh, but that's essentially how you do it. Um, so get the Wayfair, or get the Wayfinder, get the map pieces, dig up the X, come to the island, 
and uh hopefully you have more people than just one and you can get all that awesome loot out of there but i hope it helps uh if you have any questions let me know in the comments section below uh but until next time see you later